talk about how to hold the instrument and also the strokes of the instrument. Please give this video a thumbs up and let's continue. And if you stick around for a little bonus at the end, I'll be glad to share with you those cool jingle rolls. But first let's go through all of the elements, all of the strokes of the drum, and that will be your bonus at the end. So I'd like to um, invite you, if you don't have an instrument, by the way, I'd like to bring to your attention my other video, The Buyer's Guide for the finger style tambourine. And I'll link that right now in the flag above my head, as well as link it at the end of this video. And it will also be linked in the description below. So you have all kinds of opportunities if you wanna to jump to that now or wait till the end um, or come back later, you'll be able to do that. So let's begin by how to hold the instrument. You'll hold it in your non-dominant hand, which I call the second favorite hand. You'll be playing four out of the five strokes of this drum with your favorite hand, the hand essentially that you write with. And your second favorite hand is the one that's holding the drum. I like to call it balancing the drum in that it does feel like a, more of a balancing act than a, a white knuckle grip of death. And I think that's helpful for many of us to release some of the tension that we might feel, being that this hand doesn't always have the same strength that our favorite hand does, and it can get tired and cramped. So we want to continuously release that tension and feel a sense of balance. If your tambourine has a gap in the jingles, as this one does, then you'll place the gap behind the hand, the back of the hand. See how my hand is as if I'm reaching forward to shake hands with you, even though this is my non-dominant hand. And I wouldn't normally, although sometimes I do actually reach it out to shake hands with someone and give their brain a, a little bit of a workout. And placing the jingle closest to the palm, but not touching it, if you can see that. And the drum is just resting on whatever this part of the hand is called. It's just resting right there. The thumb, I'm gonna turn around the drum so you can see. The thumb curls to press against the interior set of jingles. Now you know why we need the double row of jingles. And again, in my buyer's guide, I'll talk to you about how to be sure to choose the correct tambourine, because you wanna be sure it has a double row of jingles and not a single row. So it presses against that jingle and it stays there. So you wanna find a comfortable place for not quite the fingertip, not quite the real chubby part of the thumb, but somewhere Goldilocks in between, just right. Then your two piece fingers on that hand curl around and meet what's called the rim of the drum. The rim is where the head meets the frame. And you don't want the tips of the fingers to go too far up into the head of the drum because it could muffle the sound. Remember, the drum head needs to vibrate in order to sing. And if you have fingers on the drum head, it prevents the vibration and therefore affects the sound. So just the fingertips. Now notice that my fingers, these two piece fingers here are not too close together, nor are they too far apart. It's just right. So it's basically creating a triangle of the thumb behind the jingle and those two piece fingers out front. Okay, I'm trying to give you all the angles that I can so that you can see that triangle. And yes, it is okay if this interior part of the rim goes right into the crook of the hand where the thumb and finger meet. If you don't have a wide gap between the jingles behind the hand, then you'll find, let's see, if 
for instance. Oh, I don't have too many that are <laughs> that are like that, do I? Then you'll find. Well, this one does too. But let's say yours doesn't, okay? There's enough of a gap here that you can still create space between the palm of your hand and that first set of jingles. You don't want the palm of the hand up against the jingles. And you don't want the jingles behind to be rubbing up against the back of your hand. It's just not comfortable. Keep the holding or balancing hand in the six o'clock position. In other words, if this was a clock face and 12 is at the top, six is at the bottom. And I'm not counting the fingers that are out here on the jingles because those are over here, more like in the 5.30 position, right? Or the five o'clock position. But actually where the contact is of the drum and the hand, that's six o'clock. And just feel the balance there for a moment. Feel the weight of the drum. Notice that if the drum rests a little bit forward, if you let the head of the drum shift slightly forward, feel how the weight changes in the holding hand. And if it comes too far back, what happens to the thumb? So it's sort of like when you're on your yoga mat and the yoga teacher, your feet are together and the yoga teacher asks you to sway to side to side, forward and back, and you find that center place, you'll find that here too. And it may feel awkward at times, but over time you do get used to it. And we will take breaks to shake that hand out. In fact, you may want to do that already just to loosen it. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you my favorite ways of rebalancing what feels like this holding position. So now the ring finger and the pinky finger are free so that the ring finger can tick on the front set of jingles directly in front of the jingles that the thumb is pressing against, right? So the thumb is pressing here. All right. The thumb is pressing here and directly in front of that pair of jingles is the second set of jingles. So try that for a moment. Just try some ticks. They're called T-I-C, tick. Tick and release. Notice that when you release, there is a slight jingle. And we'll work that in later as we learn the other strokes of the drum. Now, the positioning of the frame drum, of the tambourine, in relation to your body. One thing I love about this drum is it's held directly in front of your heart. And rather than being completely perpendicular to the body, look at my wrist down here, that's not so comfortable or parallel to the body because now my wrist is bent this way and that's not so comfortable either. Again, Goldilocks, and I wasn't always one truth out, right? Those of you who remember me, I find a 45 degree angle is perfect because then my wrist of the balancing arm is nice and straight and relaxed and my playing hand, my favorite hand that will play most of the strokes of the drum, doesn't have to do a reach around if the drum is parallel. And yeah, this would be nice. It's right here, but that's not so comfortable either. And it certainly isn't down here. So the 45 degree angle in front of the heart, perfect. So find that place that's comfortable for you. Open up your favorite hand.